Hello, it's Gabby here for you. Before we jump onto this week's podcast, I just want to let you know about two ways that you can work with me. First of all, I do one-to-one coaching and I do that via Zoom so we can jump on a Zoom call at a time to suit you. The second thing I've got for you is an online coaching course that's 12 modules that you can download straight away now. There will be a link somewhere around these podcast notes. And this is the course that I've designed and it's got everything in it that I wish I'd have known when I finished cancer treatment and I was lost. So you can download that course now and you can start working towards making this your happiest and healthiest year ever. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye bye. Hello there, it's Gabby here for you from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. I'm talking this week about a topic that comes up for so many people that I'm working with and people that I'm talking to and that is how do you get a good night's sleep? So I'm going to touch on three things here that have helped me help people that I work with. First of all, it might sound a bit counterintuitive but I'm going to talk about thinking about how you set yourself up for the day. How do you act in the morning? What are little tips you can do in the morning that's going to help you get a better night's sleep? The second thing I'm going to talk about is the room that you sleep in. Your bedroom, hopefully, if you've got a nice bedroom, like most people have. Very blessed to have that. And then thirdly, the thing that I think it can be the biggest struggle is thoughts. Those thoughts that come to you in the middle of the night that you don't want. Those thoughts that go round and round in your head and they're not welcome. What can you do about those if you've got those thoughts? If you've got fears particularly cancer patients, fears of recurrence. What can you do about that? As I said, first of all, about the morning, what you can do. And um, a a good nutritionist, Julie Silver, gave me these tips ages ago and it really stood me in good stead. I'd never really considered this before. And she thinks about, you know, setting yourself up in the morning for, we all know that we should be exercising. We all know we should be moving our body. And quite a lot of the time I spend at a laptop or at a computer or on my phone or at a desk writing. And so I make a conscious effort now to get some exercise. It can be five minutes doing something else. Or hopefully on a lovely sunny day like today, I've been out and I've been to our local park, just got myself moving. And so I do that first thing in the morning, it sets me up for the day. Okay. The other thing that I've picked up on is um from a lady called Susan Stewart I mentioned before she writes about intermittent fasting and she's got loads of well-being tips as well but one of hers was when in the shower or first thing in the morning think about your day and think about it visualize it going in the best possible way that it could we all worry about things that don't happen and sometimes I've done this in the past I've played things over and over and worried about things that might happen, worried about things that haven't happened yet. And, you know, if it does happen, I've lived it twice. So now what I try and do is think about my day. And when I finish my exercise, go and have my shower, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do that day. Even if I'm not particularly worried about it, just think about simple things and what would be the best possible outcome. And I play that over and over in my mind, like a little video, just for a couple of minutes in the shower. And that really helps to calm my nerves settle you know my worrying mind stop me thinking about things too much that really helps me so the second thing I'm going to talk about is the bedroom or the place that you sleep what can you do to make that help you sleep and for me uh, you know I studied feng shui a long time ago and I really appreciate now the energy and the calmness that can bring into your life from having a calm uncluttered space and that really helps me and I know if things are a bit overwhelming sometimes it can just help me just to tidy out one drawer or do some decluttering, take some clothes to the charity shop, you know, get rid of some old books that I've not looked at for a long time, all of those things. So I really make an effort now. My house isn't perfect. It's not picture perfect all the time. I'm not claiming that. But my bedroom is always clean and uncluttered. And that really helps to soothe me and get me in the frame of mind that I'm going to bed. I've got no distractions. You know, I, I speak to a lot of people, particularly if they're working from home, and they're bringing work into their bedroom. And that's really so so bad for you. Because even if you think, oh, I'm not thinking about work now, I've shut my laptop. If your laptop's still there and your work papers are still there, subconsciously, your mind knows that there's unfinished business around. Okay, and what you want is good, complete rest when you're in your bedroom. Um, the other thing that's really a good feng shui tip is to think about, you know, things under your bed. Have you got a lot of people just have a lot of clutter under their bed? You know, is it dusty? Is it dirty? 
And if it is, maybe spend a couple of hours just sorting that out, just putting things in order. Some people keep bedding or towels, whatever, under the bed. But if you put that in order, if your bedroom is a place of calm, that really helps me to sleep. It really does. The other thing that I've got in there is that I've got into the habit now of having a really good schedule. So I said to somebody the other day, you know, if you're thinking about putting yourself to bed, how would you treat an agitated toddler? Well, you wouldn't just let them run about and, and watch crazy things on the TV and let them eat a lot of sugary food and then just throw them into bed and expect them to go to straight to sleep. You'd calm them down. You'd speak to them softly, maybe give them a, a warm drink. And just take some time just to calm down. And if you do that at the same time for yourself every night, maybe it's a warm bath or a warm shower or just changing into, you know, your night clothes. Again, subconscious message to your brain that it's sleep time now. It's not, you know, work time. It's not time for thinking. It's sleep time. It's time for rest. Rest is so important for your body to rejuvenate, uh, to restore your energy. We all need that. I hope it goes without saying that I, I've made conscious effort now that I don't um, have any caffeine after three o'clock and I forget sometimes that it's in you know a fizzy drink or it can be in a coffee or even a tea has got not got much caffeine but it does have caffeine so I try not to have those drinks uh, too late at night. I am also very uh, conscious of the fact that I cannot watch stimulating or scary films just before bed. My husband it really doesn't bother him he loves a good serial killer not for me just before bed that would disturb my sleep and not make me sleep very well. So and the other thing is no alcohol before bed if you're struggling with sleeping and your sleeping patterns sometimes you think oh yeah well just a little drink it'll help me sleep it'll help me to relax but when you I've got alcohol in your system. It's not a proper sleep. It's not a deep sleep. And I know that I might fall asleep quite easily, but I wake up really early as well. And my sleep is not steady and it's not relaxed sleep. So again, if you're conscious about trying to improve your sleep patterns, try going without alcohol for a little while as well. The other thing uh, I've got as well is, um, you know, I'm not here to give you medical advice, but one of the supplements that help me a lot because I used to get night, uh, cramps in my legs as well. So when I used to get cramps in my legs and my sleep wasn't great, I started taking a magnesium supplement just before bed. And that really, really helped me. And it's something that you might want to try. You can get magnesium sprays now. If you have a hot bath or a warm bath with Epsom salts in, that's got magnesium in it as well. And that's getting it into your system. The other thing you might like to try that is lovely is a lavender spray or the sleep mist that you can get or an, an oil diffuser in your bedroom that's got a lovely calming sleep scent so lavender particular is really good for sleeping i found that some people say yeah i'm doing all these things and you know I'm, i've got myself in a good routine now but i fall asleep quite easily but what happens is if I get, particularly if i get up to go to the toilet or my sleep's a little bit disturbed i can't get back to sleep because i've got these thoughts going round and round in my mind about what if my cancer comes back what if this happens what if this happens in a relationship all these what ifs and again, you know, you've got to think about why does this happen? Why are we so worried about everything all the time? And a lot of it is our primal instincts. And, you know, think about, you know, when we lived in caves, going back to those days, if you weren't worried about things and if you weren't on constant alert, you're quite likely to get killed. And so your body's natural tendency, if there's something that's a danger, even if it's a perceived danger or something that you've worried about, is to keep you on high alert. And that's exhausting. And you cannot function like that for any period of time. You know that. You know it's going to wear you down. So you must make a conscious effort. So if your thought's going to wake you up, okay, to me, it really helps me now. I've got a lot of comfort from the fact that I know I've got a recovery plan for my cancer, for my mind, body, and spirit. There's no guarantees, nobody's guaranteeing anything. But I've got a plan. I've got something I'm working towards. I've got something I'm focused on. You know, I've got lots of um, tips, tools, techniques that I share with other people that work. I know they work. For, not everything works for everybody. But having a plan, having not just aimlessly just thinking, well, I'll wait and see what happens. For me, having a plan was one of the best things that I did because it helped me to relax and just, if you like, give it up. Some people give it up to God or the universe or whatever, but just give up that worrying and, and thinking about things that you can't control. There's certain things you can control and your nutrition and looking after your mindset and look, having cultivating a positive mindset is something that's taken me a while to do. 
uh, because I've suffered with, with depression in the past, but now really cultivate a positive outlook on life. And that helps me to sleep. The other thing you might want to try, and there's loads of apps now, and there's loads of stuff on YouTube, free stuff you can get, is meditations. You can download a meditation. So if those thoughts are waking you up in the night, you can pop your earphones in and you can listen to a meditation. Find one that you like, find a voice that you like listening to. The other thing that you can practice, and again, there's stuff online that you can find that for this, is a controlled deep breathing. So we take breathing for granted, don't we? Oh, everybody breathes. But actually, if you are anxious and you're agitated and you're unable to sleep, a breathing exercise um, can really, really help you sleep as well. Just focusing on your breathing. The other thing that's really good as well is progressive muscle relaxation. If you think about this quite often when you hear, listen to these meditation tapes, they'll say, right, relax your body. Start with your head. Relax the muscles in your face. Relax the muscles in your neck. Relax the muscles in your shoulder and then your arms. And you can do that for yourself. You can do a body scan slowly, slowly, and just think about all the areas of your body and relax them because sometimes you don't realize, and I do this with my shoulders. I know when I'm tense, I feel my shoulders go up. And sometimes when I relax and then I go, oh, my shoulders have come down. So that can be a really good thing to do. All these things and, and much more tips I've got for you as well, I'm happy to share with you as a coach. I would always remind you this uh, podcast is not a substitute for medical advice. And also, if you are regularly lying awake at night, if you are so anxious that you cannot sleep, I would recommend that you speak to your doctor, speak to your GP uh, and get some medical advice. You know, I, I'm not saying that drugs are, drugs are always the answer, but sometimes for the short term, they can really, really be helpful. And I've used them in the past, not for, not for a long time now. But if you are in that acute place where you really need some medical intervention reach out and speak to somebody speak to your doctor i'm hoping that those tips are useful for you it's always wonderful to hear from you i'd love to hear from you let me know what you're struggling with let me know if there's any any feedback that you want or any topics you'd like me to cover it's always good to hear from you thank you so much for listening it really means a lot the feedback that i'm getting about the podcast has just blown me away you know I've just had a birthday. I'm 61 and I'm now I'm on YouTube and I'm doing podcasts and I'm just absolutely loving what I'm learning and what I'm sharing with people and the work that I'm doing, the coaching that I'm doing, helping people to blossom, you know, let go of problems that have sometimes they've had for years. You know, it's never too late to start a new beginning. And if you're ready for that, I'm here for you. Reach out to me. Let me know how I can help you. As always, I'd urge you to stay safe and stay sane. Take care, my darling. Bye-bye.